audio. Test, test. We have an echo. We are aware. Man, my guys are fast. If they beat Mark, you know they're quick. But if you beat Mark, you know you're quick. Mark Coleman. <laughs> so, oh, and Hans is on there too. Hey, Hans, how are you? All right, I think we're all good on audio now. Yep, so we sound really good now. Cool. Mike, I am stoked for bow season. Ready to rock, man. I know you guys all are too. So, um, we just got back from uh, Lebanon, Missouri this weekend. We were down there with Larry Duggar, Kevin Ranfeld, and the family church. Uh, family, I guess you could call it. Great group of people. We really had a blast. It was a great time. They put on a, an awesome event. We uh, had the most unbelievable wild game feed that you could ever imagine. My guys are shaking their head back here because it was... Yeah, all of us gained at least six pounds. I mean, our stomachs hurt. It was awesome. So huge thanks to those guys. I know some of them are watching, and thanks for having a great, um, having us down and, and putting on such an awesome event. Uh, Ryan, how are you? And Larry, what's up? Tyler's on. Good man. Uh, Carter and Amy Morrison. Hey, guys, how are you? Nine days till you start, Steven. Yep, it's getting here close, getting real close. Dan, how are you? So we don't have dad with us tonight. He's uh, not feeling so good. He says that he's just a little sick, but I think that he probably just had too much at the wild game feed. Uh, so it's just me today. I know you guys are all bummed. You got just, just one holder, but uh, you'll have to make do. So we're going to be switching it up a little bit, and we're talking Western. Uh, we're going to talk Mostly antelope tactics tonight. As always, if you guys have questions, let me know as we're going, and uh, and we'll go over those, and I'll answer those to the best of my ability. Um, if, But since it is going to be just me doing it tonight, bear with me. I won't be able to answer questions as often once we start getting into things here. Um, so we're going to be talking about antelope tactics. If you have questions on how to start, meaning how to go on a western hunt, where to look, um, what you need to do to go on a speed goat hunt, uh, ask those questions too, but other than that, unless you guys ask those specific questions, I'm going to go more into um, ways to hunt antelope and effective ways to do it and some different um, tactics and I guess, what's the word for it? Not your typical ways of hunting them. Um, what is cost, Mark? Well, it all depends. If you're going to go with an outfitter, it's going to cost you at least... Let's say you're probably going to have a hard time getting a decent antelope under two grand with an outfitter. Um, 2,500 is going to be pretty, pretty typical um, when you're going on an antelope hunt. If you're going on your own, you're still going to be around 1,000 uh, just when you take in the cost of the tag, travel, um, everything else involved. You're still going to be at least about $1,000. So... Steven says, Montana antelope decoy. Should I set it up on water or use it for a spot and stock? Okay, so Steven is going to kick us off here um, right away. So the very first one that we'll go over, and I've got all kinds of clips to, to show you guys. So everybody thank Nate for putting those together for us. Um, we're going to go over antelope hunting out of a blind first. So if you're going on an antelope hunt for the first time, if you've from the Midwest or you're from the East Coast and you've never done any kind of spot and stock, everything that you've done has been sitting in a tree stand or sitting in a ground blind, I would highly encourage you to consider sitting in a water hole in a blind before you try spotting and stocking. Um, it's a completely different animal. If you're really feeling confident in yourself and your abilities, then I would say go for it. There's no really other way to learn it than to do it. So. Um, but it is going to be a lot different than anything that you've ever encountered, especially with the terrain that you're going to be in out west. So let me hook this up for you guys. So one thing that we commonly hear is that you have to shoot a long ways in, if you're going to go out west, you, especially antelope hunting. You've got to be prepared to shoot 70, 80, 90 yards. Um, and I, I'm telling you right now that is absolute bull crap. That's not true. Um, I've killed an antelope every year for about the last 
six, seven years, and I have never shot one further than 43. The furthest one we've ever shot has been 51, and my dad shot that um, buck several years ago out of a blind. He was completely calm, nothing going on in the situation. It was uh, extremely, extremely um, controlled environment that he took that shot. Otherwise, I'd say even our average on antelope has been 25 to 30 yards. Um, and we've killed them all kinds of ways, spot and stock, decoys, um, out of ground blinds, you name it, we've done it, and we're still killing them 40 yards and in. So that tells you right there that, oh, well, I'm spotting and stocking, so I have to shoot farther. No, you don't. Not true. Um, Tyler says he has pals around there that are shooting them at 30 to 40 yards. Absolutely. So we'll start with this first one here. Shooting them out of a blind or hunting out of a blind first. So when we get into uh, hunting antelope from a blind, turkeys is a very good relation as far as what you need to be thinking about inside the blind on camo. Okay, antelope see very very well. They see better than a turkey, and they say that antelope's vision is comparable to a pair of eight by um, eight power binoculars. I'm, sh I'm not going to say eight by 42 because I'm sure that their vision is much, much wider than, than 42 millimeters, but eight power. So think about an animal walking around with binocular vision. They can see extremely well. So you need to make sure that you're doing your best job of concealing yourself, even in a blind. You need to make sure that you don't have any kind of colors on you in the blind. You don't want to be moving your hands in front of the window. Um, and you need to be thinking about, even in your setups, the way the sun that's going to come up, if it's going to be beating down on you for half of the day. Um, be, keep those things in mind because you're not going to have, at least typically, you're not going to have cover. You're not going to have a tree or something to set your blind up under. You're going to be sitting out in the, in the heat. Um, so another thing that you want to think about is when it comes to antelope hunting, you do not want to just take your blind and set it up on water and expect to hunt it the next day. Most of the time, if there is another water source anywhere nearby, antelope are going to go to that other water source. They do not like to just see a blind all of a sudden pop up. Now you may say, oh, well, I've seen trucks pull in and they'll go in the water right um, by a truck and they don't have any problem. And that's true, they will. But a lot of times it's, they are very familiar, whether you believe it or not, with those ranchers pickups or those uh, vehicles out there. And, but when it comes to a blind that's sitting there over their water source, they are super nervous. And the reason that they are is because this is when they're the most vulnerable. When an antelope is drinking, that's when it's the easiest for a predator to get them. Coyote, um, some cases, a mountain lion, whatever. Uh, but it is, even, especially fawns, fawn antelope are really susceptible to eagles. A lot of antelope, pronghorn, babies especially, meaning fawns, die from eagles every year, probably more than uh, anything else out there. The eagles will really do a number on them. So keep in mind that an antelope needs time to get used to your blind. I'd say give them at least a week. You need to figure out which direction that the antelope are coming to the pond or the water hole or the well, whatever you have. If they're, and so this is easy to do. You can put a trail camera on it is what we typically just do is go and we look around the edges and see where the most tracks are. So we've got all of the tracks on the north side of the pond or all of them on the south side of the pond, we know where we need to set up. But sometimes you need to keep in mind, if you've got a pond that's really long or a water source and you're needing to, sh and it's gonna be 80 yards across there, you gotta get closer to where the antelope are going. And sometimes you may not be able to get the whole water source. You might have to pick where the majority of them are going. Um, so to recap a little bit, antelope have great vision. They can see in your blind, wear black, don't move fast, pay attention to your movements. So don't have a green colored riser on your bow or anything else either if you can avoid it. If you do have something like that, try and take some black um, electrical tape or masking tape and just put that on the front. Blinds on water sources, you need to have there for at least, at a, I'd say a minimum of three days. If you can have them for a week or two or more, the more time with antelope, the better. Um, and then be keeping in mind, you need to figure out where they're coming to that water source at and making sure that you're going to be able to shoot to that. Um, let me check and see if you guys have any questions here. If you don't, we're going to, I'm going to show you this clip. 
Mike said, never hunted antelope. What's the difference between how you hunt them and hunting whitetails? We're going through all that right now, buddy. Uh, Josh, all you need is a white sheet and a bowman. Obviously, you haven't did enough antelope hunting in your short life yet. Okay, Josh. I've tried that. Uh, I work on my grammar, too, while I'm at it, but I haven't tried that enough yet because I've never seen it work. Uh, we've tried it several times, and most of the time, I think the antelope look at you, and they say that's a guy with a white sheet, and they run off. And I'm not saying I think that because I've everyone we've ever tried it on that's exactly what happened um all right so we'll go we'll go into it now but you you might be right i might haven't did it long enough yet so we'll see okay so if you're going to be sitting in a blind Make sure you've got that window to where you believe that you're going to get the most opportunities. As soon as you think that you have that set, you need to make sure that those antelope are coming to that water source and that at some point they're going to be broadside for you. So this was an antelope that my dad shot a few years ago. I think this was 2017, and this was sitting out of a blind. That one's not going to go very far. One thing to keep in mind too, if you haven't hunted the antelope before, um, they are very small, okay? So a big buck, which this is a huge buck right here. This is a, this buck right here is actually knocking on Booner. He was only about an inch or two off of it. And he probably didn't weigh more than 90 pounds. From live weight, he may have been 110. They are very small animals. So you need to keep in mind, if you do have a quartering two shot, 99% of the time, we're going to tell you, you don't want to take that shot on animals. Um, slightly quarter two on antelope, I'd tell you, you're going to be okay. If you're pulling 70 pounds or 60 pounds or whatever, and you have a good arrow setup, that front shoulder, you're going to blow through that front shoulder. This is another setup um, that my girlfriend shot this buck uh, two years ago. And you're going to notice here, she hits this buck perfect, but hits him right in the flat of the shoulder, and she's still got 24 inches of penetration or so. Yeah, so, play that back. So that was 30 yards right there. So if you, as you can see, she's right on the flat of the shoulder. <clears throat> and she's pulling 50 pounds and 25 inch draw length and she had no issue getting well through that front shoulder and into the back shoulder so keep in mind antelope are a little smaller and i'm going to tell you right now we've killed probably between all of us at least 50 antelope and a bit a part of a lot more when you are shooting antelope kind of shoot them like an african animal keep that arrow a little further closer to the shoulder because we've actually seen now on several different occasions that we're hitting them right behind the shoulder and they're not dying we're getting one lung i think my uh cameraman has a question what's up he was just going to mention that and i'm going to show you that right here okay so this is another one out of the blind 23 yards i think on this one but I'm going to have you notice where she hits this antelope. Let's see. I'm not sure exactly how long it is till the shot. Quick time. Yep. So that shows you right there how close that shot was. So I'm going to slow this down here. Okay. So one, you can see the arrow trajectory is from over here, slightly quartered away from mom. That's who shot this one from my mom. And that arrow hits him right there, okay? Actually, it might be is it right there. Yeah, excuse me, it's right there. 
Look at that. There you can see it right there. So when he's standing here, she hits him right there, which is basically right here. If you look at that, you're going to say that is an absolutely perfect shot 99% of the time, and I would tell you you're absolutely right. This buck, he did not get to make it for a couple hours because mom shot him two more times and crushed him two more times, but even with hitting him right there, she only got one lung. And the reason that I believe that she only got one lung is I think that these antelopes, or the pronghorn is the technical term for them, their vitals sit just a little bit um, farther forward. The reason I say this is because this is like the fifth or sixth one now that we've hit them right behind the shoulder like that, and we've had them live for several hours. I had one that was quartered away, arrow literally come out right behind the offside shoulder, and uh, antelope lived for about 12 hours. We gutted him, and, he, and it hit clipped liver and one lung cut right through the one lung any a deer anything else it would absolutely been double lung um so what i'm telling you basically long story short is don't be afraid to keep that arrow a little bit closer to that shoulder yeah, if i would not so dakin just asked me he said with my setup meaning me um would I be afraid to put this on the shoulder? I'm pulling 65 pounds, I have a 28 inch draw length and I'm now shooting 455 grain arrows. I would have zero fear actually putting my arrow right on the flat of the shoulder of an antelope. Um, I can tell you for a fact right now, last year I shot my antelope a slightly quarter two and I went through both shoulders and came and the arrow was 15 yards on the other side and that was a 415 grain arrow and I was pulling 65 then as well. Um, but the an antelope were just a lot smaller than they look, and that shoulder with a, if you're an average size guy and you're pulling 60 to 70 and you have the right arrow set up, you don't need to fear that shoulder. You should be able to blow through that shoulder without any problem. Now, I wouldn't tell you to, to shoot it on, on the knob, you know, really hard quarter two, but on the flat of that shoulder, you don't need to worry about it. And I think that it's going to really be, honestly, make more of an ethical shot. I'll be able to tell you that here in about two weeks. We're going to put some of this to the test um, when we go back out there. Let's check questions real quick. Mike asks if they're tasty. Yes. They are. They're, I, love, um, I love antelope meat. I think that it's really good. Um, I've never seen the i've never had a problem with it tasting like sagebrush uh maybe i just am not that sensitive to the taste but i've i've never had that and i think that it tastes really good um brandon says spot and stock jessica evans says spot and stock we're about to get into that um spot and stock is also my favorite han says aim small miss small absolutely all right so everybody wants to talk spot and stock. Let's get into spot and stock. Spot and stock is easily my favorite method of hunting. Um, I have a hard time now sitting in a blind when it's 95 degrees and the sun beating down on the blind uh, and literally feel like I'm just getting baked like a chicken because um, that's what I feel like. And antelope, a lot of times, you, you can see them for a mile. You can see antelope everywhere but they're just not near you. And it, and so every time they walk 10 yards close to you, you're like, oh my gosh, here they come. And you're just begging for them to come in. So um, for me, I personally really prefer spot and stock now. Uh, it's a lot more engaging. You're not sitting there for a long time. And it is, to me, it's just a lot more fun. Um, it is a lot harder, but there's ways to do it that are super effective. And so with that being said, We'll go over some of these. I'm going to save that one. So the first one we'll talk about is using decoys. Using decoys is can be a very, very effective method. There's going to be certain decoys that I'm going to tell you to use at certain times of the year. Um, I will tell you right now that my all-time favorite decoy, if I can't, if I uh, don't have access to a live horse or even a cow i really want to try a cow still 
my favorite decoy over an antelope decoy, um, over every other decoy is actually a cow decoy. A moo cow, a moo cow decoy, not an elk cow, uh, not any other cow, a, a big old moo cow decoy. And the reason that this, that a moo cow decoy is my favorite is because we've stalked several antelope now and they don't care about it. So that's the, the best part about it is if you're in an area where there's a lot of cattle or there's a lot of um, sheep or livestock, any kind of livestock really, the antelope get completely used to it. They don't care about it at all. We actually drove by and there was a bunch of cows out in this pasture and um, this buck was out there with them. You can actually see a bunch of the cows right there. And what? And so we never tried this before. We're like, let's try this cow decoy. We're basically just going to try and walk kind of right by him at an angle and see if we can get a shot. Well, sure enough, we get out of the truck, work our way around this hill, and we come over, and we walk for about 100 yards and uh, get kind of close, and we're like, hey, this might work. We go about another 50 yards. Now we're only 50 yards away. And now is what this antelope d did. So is what you want to be, if you're going to try this method, this is what I'm telling you is going to happen. Once we got within about 60 yards, this antelope was bedded. He then stood up. And he did not stand up because of us. He just stood up on his own. And then he looked at us. And then it's, what he did was he stared at us for about probably 45 seconds to a minute. And he just stared at us. You know, like deer do when they just stop and look at you, he just stared at us for a minute. Once he was done staring at us, though, he decided, this is what I believe he did, he decided that's a cow. That's another, just another moo cow. I don't need to worry about him. He's just over there eating grass. And as soon as he did that, he went back to eating and was completely calm and relaxed and did, could not care less about um, Easton and I or, or the, the cow. And uh, it worked flawless. The thing that I would tell you that this gives you a major advantage over an antelope decoy is now by having that this antelope, meaning the real one, he's relaxed, he doesn't care about me, and he's not continually going to watch me, which gives me the ability to get away with a lot more. If I'm using an actual antelope decoy, you're never going to get a buck, you're never going to get any antelope that's going to allow another antelope to just walk at them without caring. They're going to stare at you. They're going to look at you. They may allow you to get within range, but they're most likely going to look at you or stare at you the entire time. So that's why I'm a big proponent of the cow decoy because they seem to really relax and uh, not worry about it once they've decided. And I've told, we've used this many times now and they always do that. You get to a certain point, they stare at you. And at that point they either decide, okay, I don't like this cow decoy or I see what looks like a human back there, or I don't care. And I'll tell you, if you're in cattle pastures with lots of cows around like this here, and uh, the antelope are used to it, I'm gonna, I would be as confident to tell you eight, eight out of 10 times, it's gonna work. You're gonna get close enough to get a shot. Um, if there's does with them, that's gonna be a little bit harder because you got more eyeballs to contend with now, and you gotta get the angle right. But uh, if you're in a if you're in an area that's got a lot of cows, eight out of ten times you got a great shot. Don't go right at them and don't go at them super fast. So don't just walk right at them and uh, and just sprint at them. Take your time. Work back and forth, back and forth if you can. Ideally, pick one angle and just make that angle, um, and that seems to work the best. So with that being said, let me show you this clip. So right here excuse Easton he's filming this with his mouth so we got to give him some props there so you're gonna see right when this blind decoy comes down you're gonna see that this antelope is just staring at us right there you can just see it for a second and at this point right here is when he decided all right you're not a threat I'm not worried about you just sitting there chewing his cud could care less about the fact that um, we're out there is now completely content and believes we're a cow. He's even walking towards us right there. There you can see he's staring again. See how he's chewing his cud though? That tells me that he's relaxed.
still chewing. About right here, I think, is when I shoot him. Yep. This was a, a pretty cool kill shot. <laughs> there you can see all the cows. No, that was not in fast forward. Uh, that if that gives you any idea right there how fast they are, they really are that quick. They are, um, they absolutely blaze when they're running hard. Uh, so that one was even nice enough to die on the road for us. That is about as good as it gets. We pulled the truck right down there and and we threw them on there and uh, went home and ate some antelope back straps. So. Uh, Tyler, yes, they are, they're used to the cows and they don't care about the cows because they're around mm -hmm. them all the time. Um, a lot of times they're even drinking out of the, of the same water sources as the cattle. They just get used to them and they don't care. But that's why I tell you, if, if you're around antelope that are not near cattle, be really cautious because a lot of times it doesn't work. They just aren't used to that and they're not willing to put up with that, uh, cow or whatever they feel as though it is getting within 100 yards of them or whatever the, the number may be. So if there's no cows, this is what Dakin's asking now, if there's no cows, how would we go about getting close to them? And so we're gonna get into that here in a minute because um, there's a lot of things that we can do there. Let me f finish checking your guys' comments here. When you get to speaking of using decoys and spots, and stock talk about the story in the book race hunting at page 117 and the black cow well that lined up perfect didn't it there mark <laughs> uh sean anthony very informative warren keep it up you got it man just getting started todd thank you for uh meeting us in lebanon we enjoyed it it was a ton of fun mark with the black cow hunter in the back or in the front definitely behind it Make sure the cow is in front of you. Um, Hans, no, I would not shoot one down the throat. Wouldn't even try it. Steven, 60 mile an hour animal, absolutely incredible footage. Thank you. Um, what state do we prefer to hunt antelope? Wyoming. Wyoming absolutely uh, is the best as far as numbers. Montana is good um, too. There's quite a few there. They get. For whatever reason, it seems like they get EHD and blue tongue every once in a while. And then they also, whenever they have hard winters in Montana, it really knocks the numbers back. Um, like they fluctuate a lot, but it seems like every two, three years, they get a lot of snow and it kills a bunch of them on the east side of the state. Uh, Wyoming though, as far as just the numbers of antelope and most, most places in Wyoming, you can get over the counter, at least archery tag. Um, I would absolutely encourage Wyoming, it's just a great state for antelope. The numbers is ridiculous, uh, and it's a lot of fun. So if you're gonna trying to go on an antelope hunt, I would tell you look at Wyoming. So the only other two decoy tactics that I would really talk about is using an actual antelope decoy. Um, and when it comes to using an actual antelope decoy, you could try it in August, um, it maybe even early end of August, but I would tell you that it's not really going to get good till early September because it's what you're going to be using when you're using a, a decoy. Um, it's what you're going to be trying to do is basically just like hunting turkeys. You're almost turkey reaping uh, antelope. They are very, very aggressive. If you can get an antelope that is you're in his territory when they're um, starting to rut, antelope are, like I said, they're super aggressive and they will come from a long ways really fast to run you off. Uh, we have found during August, it, they just don't seem to be that effective. Uh, a lot of, especially does around, they freak out, absolutely freak out. Uh, it's so annoying, um, but they're really, really hard to, to fit behind as well. Um, we've used the little hats and 
not much luck with those. I've dad's gotten some good footage and good laughs out of me using that, but not luck actually much luck actually killing one using that. Um, if you're going to use a decoy, if you have the ability to do it, the best way to do it, if you want to use one anytime, is a live mounted antelope decoy. We had two that we shared with our buddy, our taxidermist, Whalen, and uh, those do work very well any time of the year. And I believe that's because they are so realistic that we would just set them out on a food source, such as like an alfalfa field, and antelope would just work their way over to it. They wouldn't come right to it, but they would just work their way over because they felt like they were real antelope. But as far as using them to actually sneak up and, and try and spot and stalk antelope with the decoy before they're starting to rut, I would not encourage it. It may work sometimes, but it's, I just don't think it's going to be your most successful um, tactic from what I've seen. Um, but I, I'm telling you right now, when you get to before in the rut, that is, it is awesome. Using an antelope decoy in the rut can be absolutely phenomenal. But another thing that you need to keep in mind, most states, once the antelope are actually in rut, Two, it's elk season, so not a lot of people want to be chasing antelope during elk season, but three, most states their rifle season will have opened. You need to make sure that you're not behind an antelope decoy if rifle season's opened, because uh, people can shoot a long ways out there, and they probably can't tell if it's a human behind the a decoy or if it's an actual antelope, so keep that in mind. But I'm going to tell you right now, the best, absolutely best decoy you could possibly have is a real animal and uh, i think that goes without saying but that real animal that i'm gonna tell you right now is a horse okay a real horse is it's like cheating i'm starting to feel bad about doing it that's how good it works um we've used a horse with our buddy that he uh called dunny now several times and dunny is an antelope slayer anytime we use dunny it works he's just the antelope do not care about this horse at all um, the worst part about him is uh, he's got bad gas that's about it but other than that Dunny every time that we've used this horse we've gotten a shot he's a hundred percent so far um, so if again if you're in an area that you have a lot of livestock and you have access to a real horse or a real cow that the farmer or the rancher or whoever it may be can actually bring out there in the pasture with you, I would absolutely encourage you to do it because it works extremely well. I'm going to show you that um, here in a second. Let's catch up on comments real quick. Northeast Colorado is good too. Yeah, I bet Colorado is pretty good. I've never, never personally hunted Colorado, but I bet there's quite a few there. Um, Southern Idaho is probably not bad either. Steven says, we have more antelope than population in Wyoming. And Stephen is absolutely right. Yes, you guys do. Greg, looking forward to this year's hunt. You guys provide a vast array of knowledge for us newbies. Thank you. Thank you for watching, Craig. Any other questions and, or things that we can help in the future, uh, let us know. That's what we're here for. Yep, or check out the app, too. We've got lots of stuff on there. Um, question word, worded poorly. Shooter behind the decoy. Should be positioned where at the head of the back of the cow or the rear guessing shooter would be at the rear and the camera person towards the head. Mark, okay, now your question makes more sense. I apologize, great question. He is asking if you have the cow decoy, so we're just gonna say that this table here is about the size of our cow decoy, where should the shooter be positioned for that? So the reason, I mentioned earlier that Easton was filming that clip with his mouth. The reason that Easton was having to do that is because he was actually holding the decoy up for me. Uh, those Montana decoys will come with stakes that you can put them in the ground, but if you've ever hunted out west, usually it's pretty dry and that ground is really hard. So Easton was holding the decoy for me. I was in the front of the decoy near the head. And so as Easton held it, and as what I did is, we're just gonna say this is the back half and Easton's sitting right there holding it. I had my bow here and I drew to the side and I waited till that antelope wasn't looking, which was when he put his head down. And then I peeked out and I put my pin where I needed to and I squeezed the trigger. Um, so you don't necessarily have to do it that way, especially if you're not filming and you just have a buddy that's holding that decoy for you. I would encourage you to draw behind the decoy, the cover of the decoy, and then have him just slightly move it over a little bit until you have a clear shot. All right. 
Mike, who's killed? More antelope. Dad, mom, you or Easton? All right, in order, dad, me, mom, Easton. Jeremy, great info, thank you. Thanks for watching, Jeremy. You the man. Tracy, how are you, buddy? Um, Tyler, takes a while to be drawn out here in Arizona for pronghorn. One year I'll get it or have the funds to go out of state. Yeah, and Tyler, you guys have some monster antelope there in Arizona. You guys have giant everything, but it does seem like the pronghorn in Arizona are absolutely extremely huge. So, um, all right, without further ado, as I was just telling you guys, the best decoy, the best tactic in my opinion, if you absolutely want to fill your tag, if there is livestock in the area for you, is to use a real um, a real animal of livestock, a horse or a cow, and have that rancher or your buddy walk that um, animal out there for you. Make sure that it's trained, because otherwise you may have a real rodeo on your hands. So, and that is not a joke. Um, so make sure that the animal is very well behaved and that the trainer knows what they're doing or the person that's gonna be handling it. But it is extremely effective. So I'm gonna show you guys this clip. This is my dad's antelope from a couple years ago. Um, right as I start this, you're gonna actually be able to see him looking at us. He's right there. And he's only about 50 yards right here. And he just shot him. So I'm sorry, he was actually a little closer there. I thought that that was a different part of the clip. He was only about 45 there or so. So as you can see, though, we got the horse right here. Right here's the horse. And there was three of us behind that horse. We had um, our buddy, the rancher, my dad, and then myself filming. I was just standing about the middle, midsection of the horse, filming over top of the horse to the antelope. Uh, my dad was in the front, so we didn't want to be shooting underneath the horse or anything like that. Don't do that. Uh, the rancher was holding his horse and Dad drew over here, and then um, the rancher just kept the horse right where he was, and Dad stepped out about a foot or so, made sure he was plenty safe from the horse, and shot the antelope. Um, the other thing that you guys need to remember, you may be like, well, that probably looks weird with all those legs behind a horse. Antelope can't count legs, okay? So you don't need to worry about the legs behind the horse. Antelope can't count. They just think horse or not. So that was uh, that clip. I think that's some pretty cool stuff there. So let me check comments, but we're going to get into the, the final technique that is one of my favorites. Definitely the most challenging, without a doubt. Where in Wyoming? Uh, right near Nunya, Wyoming. <laughs> Kidding, Stephen. Uh, we're, we're near Gillette. I can't give you any more info than that. So, spot and stock. Spot and stock antelope can be very difficult. Um, it is very difficult. There's a couple reasons being. One, as we said before, their vision is absolutely phenomenal. They have great vision. Uh, two, the terrain. A lot of times when you're hunting antelope, it's going to be super flat. Uh, it's going to be prairie land. There's not going to be a lot of cover to be able to use to your advantage. Um, three, antelope have a pretty decent sense of smell. Uh, so they also can smell you if you get the wrong wind. Four, their, their uh, hearing is pretty good, and it's going to be very loud out west. Everything is typically going to be really dry. Rocks are going to crunch. Leaves are going to be crunchy. Um, it's going to make it difficult. So how do you... How do you compete with all of those things and still be successful? This is what I'm going to tell you is what I learned that made it a lot more fun for me because it was a lot more effective. Um, when it comes to spotting and stalking antelope, the number one tip that I would give anybody that wants to go and spot and stalk antelope is, one, you need to be hunting somewhere that has a lot of antelope. You need to have 
a lot of opportunities to sneak up on antelope. Otherwise, you're not going to kill one. It's just that you might kill one if you get really lucky, but the chances are not in your favor if you're just going somewhere where there's a, an antelope here and there. You need lots of antelope to create lots of opportunities because it's going to take you several times, most likely, to get in range with a, your bow. Um, two, the, the, this is the tip that I don't think that anybody else listens to that I think is the absolute game changer in killing antelope, spot and stock, or just doing what we call spoot and stock. Spoot and stock. Spook and stock, okay? Or spot and spook. That's what I meant. Spot and spook. Um, don't hunt antelope. Okay, that sounds really weird, right? Don't hunt antelope. Hunt the terrain. Okay, this is going to be the number one thing that will make you kill antelope with your bow when nobody else is doing it, spot and stock. Hunt the terrain, okay? So, yes, and so Dagan said when you do that, you can do that without a decoy. That is absolutely true. You don't, you don't need a decoy to spot and stock. Oftentimes, if I'm spot and stocking, I don't want a decoy with me um, because I don't, I don't want anything with me because my whole goal is to make sure that that antelope doesn't know I'm there. I don't want them to have any idea that I'm there, and I don't want them to have any idea that I'm coming. And so what I'm doing different now is where I hunt, there is two different locations, um, two different types of land. One is extremely flat prairie land uh, with lots of sage and basically no, no differences in the terrain. It's just lots and lots of prairie with um, some water sources. If you're going to try and spot and stock antelope in that, good luck. Uh, you're going to have to try and find one by some sagebrush and get really lucky. Uh, it's just not going to happen. It's super, super hard. Everything is in their favor, and you better be willing to belly crawl. If you're in most places that have antelope, you're probably in rattlesnake country too. So um, if you're going to do a bunch of belly crawling, just don't be surprised if you crawl up on a snake and meet them face to face, uh, that kind of thing. So don't. if you're going to hunt that kind of prairie stuff, you better be expecting to, to have a very, very difficult time. You better have a lot of antelope and uh, just be aware of what you could be contending with. Or you could do is what I'm suggesting that you do, and that's hunt the terrain. So find somewhere that's got, it doesn't have to be a ton, but you need a little bit of stuff to work with. Some, some rolling hills, um, preferably a little more steep breaks. Not necessarily, I'm not saying like huge drainages, but stuff where that is just a couple feet deep where these antelope could get up next to in bed, Things that are going to give you an advantage, something that's going to get you where you're out of their line of sight. Uh, so basically is what I'm going to be talking about, mainly looking for is elevation changes. Somewhere where I can get around and make a loop on them and get right behind them and stay below a depression or lower than them until I get within killing range of them. And then I want to get where I can make a shot. Because the next thing that you need to do is there's two things that you need to really pay attention to once you actually get into range of an antelope. One, you need to understand that you're not going to have 20 seconds to shoot. You're probably not going to even have 10 seconds to shoot because once an antelope stands up, whether you get him to stand up or he stands up on his own, their vision degree-wise is very, very good. And the very first thing they're going to do is they're either going to be looking straight forward or they're going to turn their head and they're going to look around a little bit. It's just what antelope are going to do, and they are going to bust you, okay? I don't care how hidden you are or how um, hidden you think you are. They are going to see you. You have 10 seconds or under to make the shot. So you need to be ready for that, and you need to make sure that you're prepared to shoot quickly. Don't rush the shot and make a bad shot, but you need to understand that you're not going to have a long time to shoot. Um, the second thing that I'm going to tell you is if you do a really, really good job and you manage to get to where you want to be, and that antelope is still bedded and they are not getting up, one of my favorite things to try to do um, if I get the opportunity is take a rock or something with me. So now I've run into the situation enough times now, I keep rocks in my pocket when I'm spotting and stalking. And that's not a joke. I literally walk around with rocks in my pocket. And what I'll do is I'll take out a rock once I think I've gotten into that exact spot that I want. And is what I'll then do is I'll throw that rock as high as I can and as far over that antelope as I possibly can. Is what I want him to do 
is see that rock or hear it or something where he then stands up and he's paying attention to that rock. He's looking, where, where'd that come from? Why is that there? Which means he's now looking away from me and focusing his attention somewhere else, giving me the opportunity to draw my bow and the opportunity to make the shot. I think that is probably one of the most useful things that you can keep in mind if you actually make it to that point of opportunity. Um, can I give a ratio of antelope to acreage or square mile? Um, a good ratio. Mark, I will try for you, buddy, but I can't say that it's going to be really accurate. I would say where we hunt antelope, it, there's probably at least... 40 to 50 per square mile. Um, and I think that, I, like I said, I'm not, I don't know if that's super accurate, but I do think that's at least in the ballpark. I'd say there's probably at least 50 uh, per square mile there. Jose, what's up, buddy? So I'm now gonna show you, this is my antelope last year, and this was spot and stock, and I had no, no decoy, um, nothing else, and I had me and a cameraman and we still managed to sneak up on this antelope and get a shot and make the shot and make a quick, clean, ethical kill. Um, and I'm gonna tell you right now, we stocked last year, I, that was only my fourth or fifth stock and I was fortunate enough to tag this buck, but uh, my girlfriend Alyssa was trying to kill one spot in stock and she just needed some more experience. We made a couple small mistakes, but um, just, just a learning curve. But I'll bet that we got within 40, rain, 40 yards at least 10 times. And lots of times she couldn't see or she was too short or um, the shot just didn't present itself. But that's for three days within 40 yards, 10 different times, no decoy, anything else, spot and stock. That is really, really, really good. But it also shows you that you can do it um, if you at least have a little bit of terrain. So I'm going to show you here. So that's just me blabbing. Nobody else wants to hear me talk more tonight. So you can see a little though, that this is a little deeper drainage. This drainage here was actually about 15 to 20 feet deep, uh, just a, a cut, natural cut in the prairie. And so what we did is when we found that, this antelope did not bed in that. I wish, that would've been great. He bedded above it uh, about 50 yards or so. And so is what you also have to keep in mind when you're out west looking through binos, sometimes you're gonna look at stuff and you're like, oh, he's right next to that thing. And when you get there, he's 100 yards away. So when you think something's right next to it, you really need to make sure it's right next to it because otherwise you might find out it's a lot further than you think. But this antelope ended up, I ended up getting a 40 yard shot at him. Um, we came up first and he was about 60 and he was bedded. And so we used, the drainage came back to the right, which was closer to him. And so when we actually got to position, he was only about 40 yards. So is what I did here, I'm going to show you a different angle too because this film did not come out very good. There you can see him. So this buck had no idea we were there, stood up on his own, looked around and saw us within 10 seconds. And is what I did right here is I drew, I used this land after that and I drew underneath there and then came up on that antelope. Now I'm going to show you the shot and the terrain from a different angle here. Okay, so there's a cow. So here you can see a little bit of what I'm talking about. If all you're hunting is stuff like this, where it's just super flat and there's not really any terrain to it, I mean, there's a couple little cuts there, but just nothing there, you are going to have an extremely, extremely difficult time spotting and stalking antelope. If you're able to find some small things like even that, if you had just that, let's just take out the rest of this, just that right there, and if I can get an antelope within 40 yards of that, he's killable. Okay? You, have, you can use those things, but you have to learn to use the terrain to your advantage. So the antelope is bedded right here. So there's the antelope. This is the one that I end up shooting. This is that drainage that I was telling you about. So this is a natural cut that went through there. I'm going to come up about right there. And this was actually only 40 yards from right here to right here. Let's see if I can, uh, okay. So here you can see me right here 
I know it's really hard to see, I apologize, but I'm right there, and the antelope has now stood up looking at me, and as I said before, what? My head's in the way. You could change angles. Jeez. So right here is where I'm standing, and right here is the buck. He's 40 yards. I know it looks like a long ways, but he is only 40 yards, and uh, as you're going to see here, I'm about to shoot him. Like I said earlier, I went through both front shoulders on that buck. And as you can see, he did not go but 40 yards. So that right there gives you an idea of some ways that you can use that terrain to be able to spot and stalk and, and get close and get in range. Um, fun fact, that antelope actually hit the ground so hard that he ripped his bottom lip off. I'm not even kidding. Like, he literally, his whole bottom lip just, like, pulled from right here halfway down his neck. I had to try and hold his lip on for photos. It was really difficult. Um, Mark, do they, antelope typically roam the wide open spaces alone. Uh, yeah, bucks do sometimes, but most of the time you're going to find them in herds. They'll always be usually in groups. Sometimes it's two or three, sometimes it's 10, 15, and it varies a little bit, too, uh, based on the rut. Jose, how is the public ground to hunt speed goats on my bucket list? I would tell you out there it's actually pretty good, especially during bow season. Um, we have hunted in public a couple times, and there's a, there is a pretty decent amount of stuff to be able to choose from. I would tell you if you're going to be sitting over water holes, it's going to be a little more difficult because usually some other guy is has the same idea and is going to be trying to get his blind there first to – Mark his spot, I guess, would be the best way to put it. But if you're going to try and um, spot and stock, there's there's a lot of opportunities in general. Like I said, you can um, sit on a water hole, too, and, and you could do that on public as well. There's no no issue with doing that. Um, but you could just might run into a little more uh, people and problems at water holes where lots of guys are trying to use the same piece of ground. Uh, but there is lots of ground there and lots of antelope on those grounds. So um, definitely a possible hunt on public and definitely doable on public out there as well. So unless you guys have any other questions on antelope tactics, I think that we've covered a lot of stuff and, and gone over a lot of information. And um, hopefully quite a bit of that will be applicable and you guys can actually take that out and use it and, and be successful with it. Um, Mark has a great question. So you kill the goat. It's hot out there. How quickly do you need to get that kill to the cooler? I Mark, as fast as you can. It, when it's like 90 like that, I'd say that you need to try and have the antelope gutted or quartered or whatever you need to do and, and into a cooler within two hours. And uh, sometimes, hopefully, at most, four to five hours. But if you can, try and keep it under three hours for sure and you should be good if you need to be keep ice in the cooler with you in the truck um, and have that ready that way if you do kill one if you're a long ways away from anywhere you can at least get it on ice and, and if you are definitely really far away the first thing that you need to do is, is at least cape that buck so that that skin is off of there and you're allowing some of that meat to breathe how many days would I recommend hunting for I would tell you, Jose, that you need to plan on at least five. Give yourself at least five days. If you can get a week, that's great. But especially if you've never done it before and you're just trying to get accustomed to it, give yourself at least five days because it's probably going to take you a day or two to get adapted. And then you, you want to have at least three to kind of chase them and figure it out and um, just keep giving yourselves opportunities to get close. So, all right. 
Thank you guys for tuning in. If you have other questions, write them into us and we'll answer those as we can. Um, the other, another great source to check out is Antelope on the app. We've got lots of tips on the app there for you. Um, go and check that out there. Also, raised at full draw. If you're a golfer or an archer, we got you covered on both. Um, raised at full draw, the nonprofit youth camps will be doing an event September 28th. Okay, go to the website, raisedhunting.com or raisedatfulldraw.com, and you'll be able to see that right there, and you can get all of the information right there. Um, so go to raisedhunting.com or raisedatfulldraw.com, and you can get all that info September 28th. I will not be there. Unfortunately, I'm going to be chasing elk. I know it's going to be really rough. So um, go check that out. And if you haven't, like I said before, go to the app and check out antelope. So thank you, guys. Have a good night.